And I got my master was through a school in Oregon, American College of Healthcare Sciences. And so uh, we have different focuses. Hers is more natural and nutritional, and mine is uh, herbal science and systems. Science and systems. Um, so we, we take a slightly different approach, but it's complementary. And I'm just going to move to the next slide if I can get this out of the way just far enough to touch the next slide. Um, if you want to just one at a time, Susie, why don't we start with you quickly? Why are you taking the class? And you'll and you can still talk because you're unmuted at this point. Okay. Um, I love Dr. Christopher. Um, I'm not credentialed like you guys, but I read uh, his. I read and I take his uh, supplements and when I saw on one of the Facebook groups that I'm uh, signed up for that have his name associated with it, I thought, well, I'd like to, uh, of course, with the COVID-19, I'd like to uh, make sure that I keep my immune system up. Good. Very cool. Thank you, Susie. Um, Barbara, Abby, um, do you want to, Barbara, do you want to jump in next? Why are you sure. taking class? Because I know how well the herbs work. And so anything else I can learn and use with my family is so beneficial. Okay, thank you. Abby, you're... I'm here. I would second that. I mean, you know, I've taken your guys' class and um, I like what you guys have to say. And I'm all about doing anything I can for our immune systems and keep my family healthy right now. So, well, really all the time, but right now, especially. Well, wonderful. Thank you. And we're going to jump in then and just get started on where we're going with this. And I'm going to click on mute all so that we're, uh, well, actually with this smaller group, I won't. If you've got a question, just pipe in and, and we'll interact. So you guys that have taken our classes in person have mm -hmm. seen this slide before. Let the, me get back to the share. Oh, share screen. Okay. Where am I at? Uh, right mm -hmm. in the middle, the green one, the green button at the bottom. There it is, thank there you. There you go. <laughs> Shouldn't be that hard, right? Okay, and you guys have seen this one, you know, an ounce mm -hmm. of prevention is worth a pound of cure, um, was Benjamin Franklin's um saying and we've talked about this a lot in our uh, um and susie you're you know that this is also kind of um a big focus for dr christopher's um herbal products you know it's it's what are we doing in our diet what are we doing in our everyday lives that keeps us healthy so that we don't have to to do the you know the the drastic measures if we get sick and you know, how do, how do we put on that prevention, especially for the COVID-19? I think all of us are already doing it. We're having this Zoom meeting, right? Instead of, instead of our in-person classes like we have um, historically done. So, I mean, obviously, you know, making sure we're not around a lot of other people is part of that prevention. Washing our hands often is part of that prevention. Um, staying home is a big part of that prevention. Um, you know, all, all those other kinds of things that we're doing that, that are helping to prevent um, getting sick or making someone else sick um, are definitely worth the pound of cure. And we'll talk about, just a quick overview of what we're going to cover, we'll talk about some single herbs on, and how they work to strengthen We'll talk about Dr. Christopher's herbal combinations for the lungs and also for the immune system. And we're going to touch briefly on some other areas that make a big difference in how we strengthen our immune system. And I'll just go to the next slide because we are actually whole beings. We are made up of heart, mind, body, and spirit. And if any one of those is weak, we actually weaken the entire system. So we're not just um, individuals that are physical and, and only physical, but if we get a, I teach that will as a tire, and if we're flat on the heart side, if we've got relationships that are 
damaging us, we're actually damaging our whole being. So to ensure that we stay healthy, we actually need to look at each area of our life. And this is all we're gonna cover on this, but I wanna make sure we talk about it before we get started, is that there's a weak area in our relationships or in our thinking or in our, our spirit it actually impacts all the rest of our ability to recover from stress and to recover from illness. Uh, so some great things to do is have a constant gratitude. We know, and there's some really deep studies done, that gratitude makes a huge difference on how rapidly we recover from illness or how resilient we are from illness. Exercise, uh, we could spend a whole hour on the lymphatic system and why exercise is so critical to pump the lymph and and keep us clean and those kinds of things i've already mentioned positive relationships and if we've got a weak relationship it's worth taking a moment and thinking about it and, and apologizing or seeing what we can do to build that relationship so that it makes a difference in our own resilience the same with our spiritual practices taking time every day to strengthen our our spirit really does make a, a huge difference in where we are overall in our immune system. Right. And that would include even things, there's again, a lot of studies out there. And as a mental health therapist, I spend a lot of time um, reading about this kind of stuff. And I've been doing a lot of reading just lately. But um, one, of the, uh, one of the things I'm really very aware of um, and have been really impressed by is how mindfulness practices, you know, not even necessarily, you know, 20 minute meditation, but even just a, just that focus on being here and now and, and what am I experiencing and what am I feeling? Just that being present and mindful. Actually, there's tons of studies that show that mindfulness practices can really enhance our immune system and our wellness in general, but, but definitely impact our immune system. Absolutely. So just an invitation to look inside, see if there's any area in that that you can strengthen to, to make a stronger immune system and to teach to your family in the same areas. I just throw this up front in our presentation because we have a world right now that is extremely hard on our immune system. Genetically modified foods, antibiotics, chlorine in the water, fluoride in the water, mercury in so many things, immunizations and teeth and so forth, um, and overabundance of sugar, things, emotions, anger and hate and lack of forgiveness the mono diet or lack of variety in our diet is a significant impactor clogging up the bowel partly from that mono diet and then any unneeded or excess vaccines and exposure to chemicals uh, all have significant impact on how our immune system runs because it has to be kept clean and have the right nourishment to run properly So germs don't make us sick, but they allow a foothold for sickness. Um, <clears throat> let's jump back to a time three years ago when we were building a house here and we had everything up to the second floor um, framed in, but there was no roof on the house. And so we were still susceptible when it snowed Christmas day, we got a foot of snow in the house. Well, that wet, if we were to allow it to stay, creates an environment for mold, creates an environment for ruining the wood. And our bodies are similar to that. If we have allowed too much toxin to stay in it by lack of exercise, by not cleaning out, by not using Dr. Christopher's uh, cleansing formulas when we need them, then we've allowed toxins to build up in the bowel or in the joints or other places or maybe in the lungs that can get a foothold or be an opening for a virus to get a hold of. So recognizing that building the roof on ourselves 
keeping us clean, keeping the toxics out is one of the critical things to uh, help us to stay immune strong. I'm going to flip to the next slide and then I'm going to open. Well, one of the things that I would just mention really quick and, um, and Dr. Christ <clears throat> Dr. Christopher taught over and over um, that viruses and, and the bacteria that make us sick are, are the garbage men of the biological world. Mm. And so if our bodies don't have garbage in there, they're not going to have what they want to feed on. They're not going to have what they need to feed on. They feed on garbage. So that's one of the really important reasons for us to um, keep our body um, clean, to be eating a diet that's as free of those chemicals as we can possibly get. Although the reality is, as we mentioned before, we live in a world where it's virtually impossible to avoid all of that. So using those um, cleansing herbs when they're needed is a really important thing. But being aware, if I get sick, it's because you know my body needs a clean out, and what do I? What can I do to support that instead of trying mm -hmm. to fight that? Yeah. So support it by allowing that fever to to uh, continue as long as it needs to. A moist to, to, fever. A moist fever. Yes. Uh, keeping the lungs moist, keeping the mucus system and sinuses and so forth moist constantly to keep it able to fight so those are those are critical things if you get sick and even before i'm going to turn off share because that's not enough information on it to do anything more than discuss but what is the immune system's job why why is there an immune immune system functioning to begin with Comments? Anybody have a, an idea to there? To protect us. To protect us from pathogens. Right. Yeah, and we'll go through a little bit of how that protection works here in a second. Um, and it's extremely complex. We have an extremely advanced system on that protection and we're going to talk about several layers of that advanced system and and how it works so you thought you were going to just maybe get a few herbs to take and stuff like that well understanding the immune system how it works really is is important. critical and important on on us being able to um, take care of ourselves I'm going to switch back to share and switch to the next slide. So we talked about this briefly already, supporting your immune system by cleansing, taking in less garbage, avoiding what we can, and taking out the trash daily. That's Fred's <laughs> code for get a little bit of exercise every day. So that doesn't mean, you know, an hour at the gym or anything like that. It just means um, 30 minutes. Yeah, a 20, a 20 or 30 minute walk. Um, if you have a, if you have like the mini trampoline, um, we've been doing a lot of that lately. You know, just um, what do they call that when you get on the mini tramp? But anyway, just jogging in place on the yeah, mini bouncing. tramp. Um, um, you know, whatever you can do to just get that 20 or 30 minutes of exercise. Um, this is a perfect time of year to get out in the garden and, and work in the garden a little bit. Just, you know, moving your muscles so that the lymph system can take out those toxins that are in our, in our body. We have a focus on this slide for the Immune Calm uh, formula, which by the name you'd think it only calms down the immune system. And while it does that where needed, Astragalus is actually a plant that is in the adaptogen class and it works both ways. It strengthens the immune system and makes it stronger if it's needed and it calms down the immune system from things that we aren't really allergic to but that the body has had in the past an allergic response or an overactive response to it. And marshmallow is a very calming plant that's also extremely nutritive. So those two together will calm down the immune system, but 
and, and it's a perfect one to take in preparation for anything so that our body has the resources to either ramp up or calm down depending on the need. Right. Marshmallow also is really important for what we're going to talk about next. Marshmallow is a huge help with gut health. Um, our, our gut really has, our immune system is largely made up of um, those little friendly bacteria. They're the first real line of defense um, inside of our body for pathogens that don't belong there. And marshmallow is really helpful. It's a very um, strengthening plant for the, the lining and the tissue in our gut that allows those um, little friendly bacteria to have a good home. Absolutely true. So this slide starts out with a blank there. And I don't know if any of you are unmuted right now, but what is that blank? 80% of our immune capacity is in our gut. It's in our gut. gut. Absolutely <laughs> true. Thank you. Uh, and then there's just a couple of articles there by mainstream media that say that's absolutely true and i see more and more of those um, and you've got these in in the slides that were emailed to you about an hour ago uh, so that you've got capability of of touching on those again so if the first line of defense is in our gut gut health is our most important thing we can do to make sure that we're healthy and and i'm i'm particularly passionate about this one because gut health also has to do with our mental health, but we're not going to talk about that today. But, but our gut health is like incredibly important to so much of our overall health. Um, it, and we're going to talk about prebiotics, which soothing digestion is a prebiotic. Um, prebiotics, uh, like marshmallow, marshmallow is another one that's a prebiotic. They actually help get that gut lining healthy. And we've talked about this for Abby and Barbara, we've talked about this in our classes, that that gut has to have that real slippery mucousy um, lining in it to be able to have, uh, for those bacteria to be able to function properly. They kind of swim around in that goo. And, um, and a prebiotic basically just helps create that slippery, um, stuff inside of our gut. So in addition to the soothing digestion that has slippery elm and, um, and uh, licorice root in it, other good prebiotics are oatmeal, uh, flax seed, chia seeds, beans, onions, garlic, apples, asparagus. And one of the really important things about prebiotics that we know is the importance of a variety. Um, one of the things I've been reading about lately is how Various species of those back friendly bacteria in our gut need various nutrients that's in our food. So some of those bugs thrive on, you know, the fiber that's in our apples and our apple peels. Others thrive on the fiber that's in the lentils or the beans. Others absolutely love oatmeal or garlic or onions. So different species have different needs. So eating as wide a variety of whole plant foods as we can is really one of the really critical pieces of helping our gut maintain a wide variety of healthy, friendly bacteria. And the other thing that's mentioned on that slide is the probiotics. Now, before I slip to the next slide, I want to do a little bit of math just to remind us that we should not be spending money on commercial probiotics. There's about 5,000 species of friendly bacteria in our gut and that we know of that that <laughs> has been documented by science that 5000 like winona mentioned all feed on different things but they all have different jobs and functions so for missing some of them that job is not being done and there are some specific diseases that are being mapped to specific um microbacteria that's in our gut that are missing in our gut. Now, if you look on the store shelf where you find the probiotics, 
the most, some of them have one lactobacillus or, or something, and others have, and, and they're touting their claim, we got 34, that's the most I've ever seen, 34 probiotics in us. Well, 34 is what percentage of 5,000? It's less than one-tenth of 1%. One and so why are we spending 40 or whatever dollars on a bottle of probiotics when they actually don't have very many strains and don't do jobs probably that our body's missing right now? Well, one of the other things about that that has been really astonishing to me is they have done some, some work on figuring out if providing the right nutrients to the gut mm. increases the 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 variety of the bacteria in our gut and they found that that actually is true that um so one of the one of the favorite author or, well one of the authors that i really like his name is william lee and he talked about how his mother was undergoing immunotherapy for cancer the bug that she needed in her gut to support that cancer immunotherapy feeds on cranberries and um what was it pomegranate mm -hmm. um, pe cran cranberry and pomegranate whatever it is that's in them and so to support that he had her drinking pomegranate juice and cranberry juice every day and um, he said you cannot get that particular variety of uh, bacteria from a probiotic the only way to increase it in your gut and to strengthen it is to provide those foods that it needs so you know Prebiotics are the how do we give it a place to live, but the probiotics need to come largely from our environment. Um, there are some probiotic foods, but they get their they get their power from the environment. I don't know if any of you have ever made sauerkraut. Um, I make it every at least once or twice every year, and how that ferments is by pulling. Um, various bacteria and and things out of the air where it's fermenting it, and so what creates the probiotic in those foods is actually the same um, bacteria that you need that's you know all around you um, in your in your environment and it just you're, you're feeding it what it needs and you're adding extra to your gut when you eat those um, those uh, probiotic foods so, and I love Winona's sauerkraut and the uh, fermented pickles. Now, yes, they have to be kept in the refrigerator. Those are, those are fermented, so they are not sealed and, and put on the shelf, but they're absolutely the tastiest thing. And uh, I use muscle testing to test what I eat. And I often, several times a week, and my body's saying, hey, you need a little sauerkraut or you need a little bit of, pickles in what you're eating and so our body actually will keep us healthy um, if we use muscle testing to do that so talking about another part of the uh, system our t killer cells there's quite a lot of stuff going on inside of our body and i will not take time in this to linked to that video, but there's a YouTube video there that actually shows um, the T killer cells engulfing and killing cancer cells. And you might want to, and it to does watch this, that after yeah. this. And it does the same with virus infected cells. Um, T killer cells are amazing and they do destroy um, all kinds of things. And Winona pointed out that that one he's pointing again at looks an awful lot like the coronavirus. <laughs> so let's continue. So we've mentioned most of these things, how to have a healthy immune system with cleansing, with healing the gut with pro prebiotic, slippery elm, and probiotic foods. Now let's move to a few other things that actually support our immune function. And 95% of that comes from the good nutrition that we get from our food. Now, herbs are just food, 
and food is our medicine. So if we talk about food and how it works for us, uh, herbs are just plants. So that's how, how we get those. So on to a few of the herbs. Dr. Christopher's combinations of herbs. Kitty Mune, Kitty Well, uh, which is echinacea and a few of the other plants. I should have glanced and looked up exactly what was in each one of those. I forget the, the combination that's in those. But Dr. Christopher's super garlic immune formula has a long list of plants in it. It used to be called the anti-plague formula, as you're familiar with, I'm sure. But it starts with garlic juice and then it has mullein and wormwood and lobelia and marshmallow and white oak and black walnut and skullcap and gravel root and plantain and aloe vera. I'm going to go back through and just mention a, one or two primary properties on each one of those because each one of you have a pretty broad um, understanding of, of herbs and Dr. Christopher's herbs. So let's mention the properties. I'm going to jump garlic right now because on the next slide I've got uh, quite a few properties on garlic. But mullein, uh, tons of properties also. In addition to pain relief and being very calming to tissue, I have another slide for mullein too, but we don't have all the properties on it. So why don't you mention a few of the um, major ones? One of the major ones is that it's anti biotic, it's also anti-viral, um, and it's very, very healing to the lungs. That's one of its most well-known properties, is that it's um, specific to the lungs and um, providing their health. One of the things that, we, that um, science now thinks that Mullen does, or those that are studying it, thinks that how it works is it helps actually promote, again, Fred talked about, you know, the mucousy moist in our moist. lungs one of the things that we think it does in the lungs is allow um, that mucus to stay really thin and really slippery so that the little sacs the alveoli in the lungs can expand and contract like they need to um, because that's one of the things that happens when we get too much fluid in our lungs is that those sacs can't expand and fill with air um, and the same with a lot of different lung diseases. They either cause those little sacs to get hardened and, and they can't flex like they need to, or um, you know maybe they start squeezing down like asthma. But mullein is really helpful to, to create an environment that allows those little sacs to have as much flexibility as they can. And it actually heals the, the lungs. I am working with one of our friends right now um, who is a long-term smoker and trying to stop smoking and and we're using mullen as a lung healer but also a um, a pipe tobacco if you will uh, to start healing while he's trying to get rid of the habit of smoking. Wormwood is a uh, worm killer as it says in its name but it also has quite a few other properties there to kill uh, viruses and bacteria. Lobelia is a guide herb, but also an anti-poison. So it, it's a, what's the word for anti-poison? Anyway, it, it will neutralize poison. I'm missing that. So, so, so when our, one of the things that happens um, when our body starts destroying bacteria and stuff is sometimes they will create toxic materials as they die yeah. so light lobelia is really helpful for that to kind of make sure that any toxins that those dying bacteria or viruses produce are neutralized and dealt with marshmallow we mentioned before how calming it is to tissue and how soothing it is it's also very nutritive in a multitude of other ways white oak bark is in dr christopher's calcium formula because it has so much calcium in it. But it also has a lot of other minerals in it that help the body to rebuild. Black walnut hull, if you'll remember Dr. Christopher's story of the um, soldier with the impetigo 
and he used black walnut hull to kill that fungal infection of invitigo. And black walnut is a very well-known antifungal. Skull cap is known to help rebuild the base of the brain and also the entire nervous system. And it's an antispasmodic. So if there's damage going on in the nervous system because of a viral infection, skull cap is extremely eff effective in taking care of that damage. Gravel root, one of its properties is to break down gravel or um, inorganic calcification in the body and, and toxic overload in certain places. So it'll, it'll break it down and help the body clean it out. And plantain is known as a very strong poison puller. It, it actually attaches to and pulls poison out of the body. And that's one of his primary herbs in the sting and bite formula. In fact, it's the only herb in the sting and bite formula because it pulls poison out of the body so effectively. And if you're wondering why the right side of my face is a little swollen today, I got a bee sting two days ago and uh, <laughs> it swollen. It's down quite a ways today from what it was two days ago. Thanks to plantain. Yes, and I use plantain to pull the poison out. Um, and olive vera gel, partly to make this formula as a drinkable or, or syrup type formula. So such a powerful, powerful formula. Aloe vera gel is also antibiotic. Yes, it is. And we'll show that in a moment. I wanted just to show this snapshot of garlic properties since garlic is the primary one in there. And my red arrows point to the fact that garlic is antibacterial or antibiotic, antifungal, and antiviral as part of its 33 properties. And you'll have that in the slides. You can look through all of those. I have a spreadsheet with a few hundred herbs in it and their properties mapped out so I can just filter on one herb at a time and see what their properties are to see what it is. You'll notice garlic is also an expectorant to help clean out those toxins and, and keep the lungs clear. Yeah. yeah, and keep the lungs clear. So very, it's a, a antispasmodic as well. It's a febrifuge, so if you get a fever, it's a very helpful, it's very helpful for that. Calm systemic, is tonic to the body. It's got so many um, properties that help us to grow. And you'll notice the other one I kept on this one is ginger, because ginger is also antibiotic, antiviral, and antifungal. And it's on our next slide because I wanted to spend just a few minutes longer on ginger and then some of the other things. Uh, ginger root, my favorite if I get a virus because it calms the stomach down, fights the virus, and is a great tasting tea. I'm sure each one of you have done it where you've just taken a ginger root, you've grated off with a, a fine grater, maybe a half inch or a quarter inch, and um, just poured boiling water over it and made a tea. And so ginger is one of the things that I would turn to, garlic, ginger, and at least one other, because I like giving it a triple punch if, if you're sick. Uh, red raspberry leaf, well known for clearing toxins out of the body. For women, they should be or, or are best served by taking red raspberry leaf tea or something else in, in the raspberry leaf format every single day because it provides everything the woman's body needs. And then echinacea and golden sill as a combination is a wonderful one-two punch for any kind of uh, viral infection. However, it's strong enough that you don't want to take it for longer than a, a 10 days or so at any given time without taking a break. So with Echinacea and Golden Sill, absolutely 10 day max, seven to 10 days is the recommended time, and then switch to something else. You don't have to go off of all the antivirals. You can switch to any one of the others that we'll show in two slides because there's a whole bunch of antiviral plants. There's more than what we'll show here, but, but there's a whole bunch. 
Um, this is just kind of an introduction to the antivirals in saying, let's not take pharmaceutical antibiotics. The plants that are listed here, the 12 plants that are listed here are all antibiotic plants. And I'm not gonna spend any more time there. I'm gonna switch to the next slide, which shows how many of those highlighted are also antiviral as well as being antibiotic. And you'll notice that uh, burdock and calendula and echinacea and garlic and ginger and licorice root and mullein and peppermint and sage are all both antibiotic and antiviral. And then you can add to that the astragalus, which we were talking about earlier in the Immucom formula as being a booster to the immune system. Well, it's antiviral. So what a wonderful way to boost the immune system or calm it down while at the same time having the reserves put in the body to be antiviral if you need those reserves. Um, any comments or questions on any of these plants before we jump to the next slide? Okay, so that's Let's move to this slide and then I'm going to jump out of the slide view and, and just um, open a discussion. This is just to show how many of those are also antifungal. And so a good portion of the ones that are both antiviral and antibiotic are also antifungal herbs. And quite a powerhouse of being able to strengthen the body without um, needing to do anything else but herbal to strengthen it. I know that Barbara and Abby, our other attendees, are using muscle testing. Susie, are you using muscle testing to check for what plants your body needs? Okay. No. I will just mention that if you go on the Dr. Christopher's fan club site, the Facebook site, I posted a muscle testing video there. It's about 36 minutes long and it teaches my um, simplest method of muscle testing and a few reasons why. So I won't spend any time on it during this um, class, but very powerful why to use muscle testing. So you're listening to the other 99% of your body and not making decisions without that tool. So what happens if you get a virus and you fight it with plants? Oh, welcome, Anne. Yeah, welcome, Anne. Didn't see you pop in because we were in the middle of other things. What happens if you get a virus and you fight it with plants? You get better? Yeah, you get better. <laughs> Barbara, go ahead. You're not getting all the horrible side effects of prescription drugs. Oh, I love that. I That's absolutely true. love the fact that we're not putting extra toxins in that actually slow down the body. Right. One of the things I've noticed is that you get better faster. So um, mm. some of you know that I, I used to work um, at a residential treatment facility for teenagers, which is as bad or worse than daycare for getting sick every winter. Um, and I worked there for several years and um, I didn't get sick most of the time, but the one time I did get sick, there was something really icky going around and most of my coworkers were out for more than two weeks with it. And I was able to kick it in just a few days. So it really, it, it just goes a lot faster and a lot easier with plants. I don't think I was nearly as sick as most of my coworkers either. I invite people to give it the one, two, three punch with more than one plant and high amounts. And I find that I can usually get rid of it within 24 hours especially if you start in on a heart as soon as you feel that first tickle or that first tiredness and increase your water, increase um, your antiviral plants by two or three or four. And using muscle testing, you can find out which ones your body is going to respond the quickest to and then just punch it hard and get rid of it in that first 24 hours. There's no reason to hang on to a virus if you don't need to. 
Any other comments before we jump off of the what happens and what your experience is in fighting viruses? All right, we will move on to the next slide. Um, I'm just gonna mention, I'm gonna jump over the, well, let me share them long enough so that you can uh, see that they're in here. And then we're gonna move on to the others. You'll notice that Winona's included her sauerkraut recipe in here. And you got these in the slides before class. The uh, fermented dill pickle recipe is in here. The slippery elm smoothie, which is a great way to strengthen your gut, which we mentioned, is also in here. We promised to talk about lung support, so that is very next on our topic. And <clears throat> we just want to mention some single herbs that are extremely powerful in uh, lung support. We call it here in this valley Brigham tea. It's the ephedra species class, and there's about 20 of them worldwide. So there's something that grows in the desert of every country. I know it grows. It depends on where you are. And if you're in West, if you're in the West Texas area at all, um, it grows like crazy there. Um, grows all over here in Utah. Grows around California. It grows yeah, pretty much all over the West. Um, it grows in Asia under a different name, but there's, there's quite a few subspecies of it. And Brigham tea by itself is a wonderful, or the ephedra species of herbs, is a wonderful bronchial dilator. It's great for getting rid of asthma, for opening up the lungs again. It's an antihistamine. It uh, is a um, expectorant just to clear things out. So I would want to have some of that on hand. And in fact, a lot of Dr. Christopher's product formulas have uh, Brigham tea in, in them. Astragalus, a, a very powerful one for lung support again. I think it's so interesting how um, plants have multiple different properties. You know, it's not not like um, one of the things that I think is one of the drawbacks of medicine as we think of it or drugs as we think of it is that they are very um, laser focused. So they're, you know, they only, they do one thing. Um, where plants tend to do a multiple of things and they tend to do what your body needs. So, you know, if you're taking astragalus, and it's also, it's antiviral. It's also supporting your lungs, which viruses often impact your lungs. It's also helping your immune system, which is what's needed to fight any kind of a pathogen. So they kind of, they kind of are more than just that one laser focused on a symptom. They actually are treating entire systems. Holy basil is the next one showing there. You're again the expert on that one, dear. And, and I was really surprised to find out that that's a really good lung, um, lung uh, support. support because I use holy basil and I often recommend it to clients. It's a uh, wonderful antidepressant. Um, it's, it works at, at least as well as St. John's wort. Um, and again, depending on what's going on with your body, um, it can work better. But holy basil or Tulsi is um, excellent. And it, and it tastes good too. And it's also a, a female hormone support oh. plant. So rhodiola is an, another adaptogen plant that strengthens the body's ability to handle stress by about four times, but it's also a lung support plant. I'm going to mention mullein there. I got a separate slide, the next slide on mullein. So we won't talk about it right now, but it's a single that I would absolutely have in your uh, arsenal of strengthening your body, strengthening your lungs, helping the body heal faster. It's got so many properties. We use it for rebuilding the back, uh, for anything with joint problems. It's extremely valuable. Dr. Christopher has two formulas that we're going to talk about on the next few slides, the lung and bronchial formula and the respiratory relief syrup. 
So let's go to Mullen and actually talk more deeply on Mullen and its properties because Mullen's properties are so, so powerful. Uh, now Mullen is a plant that grows pretty much all over the United States. Um, we have it growing in our backyard. I've seen it growing in New England. I've, you know, it just it just kind of grows everywhere. In some states, it's considered an invasive weed because it just kind of is everywhere. It was um, it's not native to the United States. It was brought here by European settlers, but it's kind of just made its way around the United around the whole country. Um, our for my first experience with mullen was for pain relief, and I and I've told the story in in other settings. Um, of having a broken arm, a uh, pretty severe broken arm, and being desperate to handle the pain without taking um, drugs, and finding that Mullen actually took care of the pain extremely quickly and extremely effectively. So it's a terrific pain relief um, plant, uh, especially in the tea. We've mentioned already that it's an antibiotic, an antiviral, um, and um, I'm gonna let you go ahead and talk about the rest of those properties. Well, astringent, of course, um, tightens things back up again. So you can actually put it on a wound on the outside of the body or take it internally to, to help the body get back its normal tone of the tissue. Uh, demulcent means that it's calming to tissue. Discutant, I should have looked that up. I don't remember what that, that one is. Um, diuretics, of course, clearing excess water out of the body, and, and expectorant. Again, another expectorant while it heals the lungs. What a powerful plant to have on hand. Do remember that Mullen has those little teeny hairs on the outside of the leaves, and so we always filter mullen tea through a coffee filter or through a, a very fine woven cloth filter. You don't want to get those hairs in the back of your throat and, and end up coughing and, and choking on them. It's extremely effective in helping the body to start healing again. Uh, uh, while we're on mullen, we need to mention its other property of being uh, a strong pain reliever that is valuable in getting someone off of opioid addiction. We have several women that we've helped get off of opioid addiction that they've been on for, one woman was 12 or 13 years, the other one was 15 years, and within just a few months, completely opioid free and pain free. The mullen was only needed for the transition time, and then it wasn't needed anymore because it helps to heal. We also have another gentleman that we helped who was um, not responding well to the opioids, trying to heal from open heart surgery and still had open wounds in his chest. And six months later, when he finally would agree to try and mullen, he didn't need the opioids anymore for the pain. And all of a sudden his chest started to heal. And he does- Because that's what a discutant does. So discutants actually help with, uh, I looked that up, Thank, Thank you, you. Google. <laughs> um, it actually helps um, dissolve or or get rid of the the infective infected material and the t excess tissue that's you know sometimes like the scar tissue that kind of stuff when you have a wound which is what it did for him. Um, it helped to reduce that that um, scar tissue and get rid of the infective garbage that's in there. I jumped over emollient. Uh, an emollient and a demulcent are two of the same thing. They're both calming to tissue. One's inside the body, one's outside the body. And producing that thin mucousy stuff that's to, needed for the lungs, for joints, for... And to protect the tissue while it heals. Uh, strongly nutritive and a vulnerary, or in other words, it kills pathogen, pathogenic um, uh, worms and Parasite. parasites. So such a powerful plant. If you're not keeping mullen in your house all the time, I advise you to grow it in your backyard, keep it in your house, have it available always because it's powerful for so many different things. All right, let's talk about the lung and bronchial formula. 
which begins with, you'll recognize some of these we've mentioned before, marshmallow root. It is, again, a very powerful plant just to calm things down and provide nutrition. Mullen, we just spent time talking about uh, chickweed, calming, pleurisy root, actually directly um, a actor on the lungs, helping to rebuild and heal the lungs. Lungwort, another one that rebuilds and heals the lungs. And we mentioned before already lobelia, how lobelia is in a guide herb, but also it fights poisons. And it's so, so powerful in helping the lung system. Respiratory relief syrup. Nettle. You know, nettle is very unknown, and I couldn't find a lot of information about it on its properties, but there's tons and tons of research on it and on how beneficial it is for the body. We've talked about mullein, we've talked about garlic. Fennel is a wonderful anti-gas um, plant, but that's not why it's in this formula. It's in this formula because of its nutritive properties. Chickweed, we also use chickweed for the skin, and chickweed is going to be calming to all of that tissue, and it's in a base of apple cider vinegar and pure vegetable glycerin, so just an extremely um, calming formula. Now, recognize that a bottle of anything, and I'm gonna take this off of share for just a second so that you can see what I'm holding. Um, a bottle of anything is going to, uh, I can't tell, there we are. That's only four ounces, and I looked up the amount of the recommended dose, which is one teaspoon of the respiratory syrup three times a day, which is equal to one tablespoon. That's eight days worth. So if you think you're going to need that, I'm going to suggest you get three or four on hand and keep it in the cupboard. I will mention right now that that was everybody's idea, so I can't even get it from the manufacturer right now. It's sold out and has been for two or three weeks. So. Which is a good reason to know those other single plants. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because it might be hard to find prepared things right now in the, in the uh, world that we're in. Um, I'm not gonna share this one because guess what? We're about done. It's just my slide to mention, use muscle testing. I'm going to plug in again here how critical it is that we learn how to listen to the rest of our body because our thinking brain is only 1%. It needs to listen to the rest of the body and what the needs are, the other 99%. And muscle testing is the way that that's done. And it's been about a week ago that I presented a, a video training on muscle testing, and it's posted on uh, Dr. Christopher's uh, Formulas Facebook page, which I think everybody in this group is familiar with. Um, if not, shoot me a note and I'll, I'll put a, a link in for it. And did you have something else? No, I, I, I think if you guys have questions or, or comments, this is a great time to talk, find out what we can answer or help you with. Or Go ahead, Abby. All right, I have some questions. Let me look at my notes here. Um, okay, let's see. First one doesn't really have to do with what you talked about, but what are your thoughts on elderberry right now? I've heard conflicting stories. Hmm. Elderberry has always been a strong um, anti it was, it's, one of, it's one of the antivirals. I know that um, I use elderberry. I think it's elderberry flower, isn't it? Um, I use, I, I have used, I, I have some downstairs, not that I've had to use it for a long time, but the last time that I had the flu, that was one of the teas that I was taking. And I understand it's a very helpful antiviral. Um, okay. What are you reading, Abby? Well, you know, we are, well, I had tested positive, but we pretty much had the flu in January and that's what we were taking. And I think that's why we had it so mildly and um that it didn't you know uh, all, the whole entire family had it and that's what we were taking um and then i just i kind of just keep hearing you know some people say that it's 
not a good thing to take with this new virus. And I have no idea why um, people who are into, you know, supplements and things like that are saying they're not taking it, but I, I don't know what to believe anymore. <laughs> so that brings up where my belief is in listening to our body because the science doesn't tell exactly what our body needs, but muscle testing does tell exactly right. what our body needs. And, and we can trust it 100% to know that our body's going, I need this. Right. That, that's one of the things that has gotten me really convinced about the whole muscle testing thing is realizing that every single one of us has different, a, a huge complexity of factors. You know, our genetics, our, our environment, um, the people around us, you know, 101, our diet, all kinds of different pieces. And so what will work for my body in a, in a particular virus might not work for your body because your body's immune system might need something different. So muscle testing lets us figure out for my particular body, my genetics, my environment, my diet, all those pieces on, you know, pieces that we can't even really know about, which one of these, you know, five herbs is going to be the most effective for me. So, you know, e even Fred and I have had experiences where, you know, we'll, we'll be sick and something works really great for him, something different works really great for me, but it doesn't work for both of us. And okay. uh, Yeah, and I would actually, as a young mother, or as, as a mother of young children, uh, whichever way that sounds better, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, would, I would ask that question for each child because their body is unique, and their sure. body needs a unique something to fight that. So take the, the list that we've published and do a quick search on the internet to see if there's other antivirals. So the very first question I ask when someone says, I'm sick, I say, is it, and is it bacterial, is it viral, or is it fungal? And I always ask okay. that question first because we had a, a friend recently who texted and said, I've been sick for a week. Why can't I overcome this? I've taken and she named like eight different things. And I said, what is it? Is it bacterial, viral, or fungal? And she comes back, texts back, it's fungal. No wonder I'm not making any progress. Right. <laughs> so. and, and, you, and you can ask your body that with your muscle testing. Your body knows the answer to that. Okay. Yeah, and I know, you know, it's my, my kids have, have been enjoying taking, you know, we've been doing vitamin C, vitamin D, they're multi, and they ask every day for elderberry, for their elderberry gummy. So <laughs> <laughs> I think it worked for us last time. Um, so a couple other questions real quick is on some of your things, I noticed, you know, they're um, in liquid form. What if they're in capsules and I have, have young kids, can I dump one of those in a drink? Can I dump those out? How do I get that to all of my kids? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Fred always opens his capsules. When he takes his herbal supplements, so he buys them in bulk, he takes them by the spoonful in a glass of water. I can't, that's like mud to me. I can't do that. I take the capsules. Uh, yeah. but yes, you can dump them out. So yes, you can take them any way that you can, you can get them in. There are some of them that are bitter herbs, and so it's worth taste testing it yourself to see if it's something that you would gag at, maybe. But I, there's no herb that I can't take uh, because I just don't want the capsule getting stuck in my throat for me. Yeah. For children, yeah. too big of a capsule, obviously. Yeah. Keep going. Okay. Um, let's see. Last couple things. Um, I know you, you went over this. Um, so I'm guessing thoughts on pri probiotics or is that's, that's, that's a good thing. I just, same thing, kind of hear back and forth, um, various information on that. Um, so I'll just look back at, at kind of what you went over on that, um, on the prebiotics and the probiotics. Right. Um, is it, is it okay to take those kind of, you know, I have like a couple of, um, I don't know, like, I guess supplements, uh, um, capsules of those. Is that a good thing to be taking then? Will I sound like a broken record if I say use muscle testing? Because your body will tell you whether it's right <laughs> or not for your sure. body. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Um, and then let's see. You know, I have some of the red raspberry tea, and I know you'd given it to me, I think, for like 
uh, I, I think it was like women type things. Um, I noticed that was on one of your ones and I didn't quite catch if you said what else that could be used for as far as the lungs or the immune. So, so it's actually a really, it's got a number of things. Yes, it really helps balance the hormones, red raspberry leaf. The other thing it does is it's a powerful blood cleanser. So it kind of helps okay. get garbage and toxins out of our system. And the other thing it has, the reason it's such a powerful hormone balancer is it's massively loaded with minerals and, iron and, and, and nutrients. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's a fa fantastic plant. Um, it provides a lot of nutrition to your body. Um, a lot of those minerals and things that your body needs to be healthy and to stay supported. So. And that's good for the whole family? Oh, yes. absolutely, yes. Yeah, Dr. Christopher's, if you read his son's story of him, um, gave it to this farm family that was out in the middle of nowhere or, or said, just use it and don't eat anything else until you've gotten over the the flu. Uh, just drink the tea until you get over the flu. And 24 hours later, they're over it, of course, because they're not dumping more toxins in for the body to try and process. Sure. Okay. And then I think you probably already, I don't know why I jotted this down, but just um, how, how does the mullen come or how do you use that exactly? Is it a powder? Is it a tea? Is it all of the above? Yep. So we... <laughs> We tend to, to um, harvest our own because it grows all over um, and we grow it in our backyard, but you can buy it cut so that you can make a tea. If you're okay. going to make a tea, we mentioned you want to strain it through a cheesecloth, double layer of cheesecloth or something like that because it has little tiny hairs on, um, on the outsides of the leaves. Um, Capsules you, work. I'll tell you, if you're experiencing the toilet paper shortage, Mullen is known as cowboy toilet paper. <laughs> so, <laughs> Interesting. I like that. Okay, and then I see it looks like you have it in like a, a dropper or a, a capsule as well. Right, you can do yes. it, yeah, so a tincture or you can okay. get it in capsules, whichever way works for you. Perfect, perfect. All right, great. Is that it, Abby? I think that covers mine, yep. Okay. Anna, we haven't heard from you. Do you have questions? Unmute yourself real quick if, if there. There you go. So did you have any questions or, or anything? And I'm not hearing you. No, still not hearing you. Not sure if you can. You could add. You could type in your question into the chat if you'd like. Yes, please drop it in the chat. Let's see. Mm, do we have a chat box that's yeah. instantly open here? Yeah, right there. So you can type something in there if you want. That one. No, see the yellow right there. Where's this oh, chat? Okay. <laughs> Here we go. All right, we'll watch for you on the on the chat side. Um, oh, there we go. Okay. Oh, thank you. No questions. It's it's wonderful to see you, Anne. Um, Susie, questions? Not until we hang up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I, the email address you got most of your things from is uh, coming straight to us. So you're welcome to just shoot an email and and ask that kind of stuff. Uh, Barbara, what did you have? And then we're gonna ask for feedback too on how well we did on this Zoom since this is the first time I've done a Zoom group meeting. I don't have anything. I just muscle tested as we went through all the herbs to see what I needed and what Nick needed. So I'm good. Now that's wonderful. And that's what muscle testing is for. It, it's uh, exactly where we're at. The other thing that I will mention that I discovered with a couple of clients is our body knows if we've got a virus and you can muscle test for that one also. So why, why wait and have to go and, and be uh, Concerned. Taking, yeah, worried about it when you can actually muscle test and, and know whether you need to fight something. Uh, and that's not meant to scare us, it's just meant to say, hey, there's a really quick way to, to test for ourselves. Any, anybody else? We're at an hour and 10 minutes, which is, I, I 
published it as an hour and 15 minutes, and it looks like we're going to be inside of that. No notes from anyone? I love okay. notes. <laughs> well, thank you all for joining us. And again, we're Fred and Winona Davies with The Wholesome Life in St. George, Utah. And I've been hosting Dr. Christopher's fan page for his formulas for 12 years now. And there's hundreds of stories of people getting better using herbs and herbal combinations of Dr. Christopher's. Uh, and both Winona and I are master herbalists, and we use them uh, Daily. lots. <laughs> Daily, at least, yes. Uh, so if you've got questions, uh, we, we can certainly help there. We can help you jumpstart your getting well with a 62 system assessment using muscle testing, asking your body how it works and, and what needs to be corrected. So we look forward to interacting with you later. And if you've got some specific questions or a, a class you'd like, please um, let us know. The phone number that was on your invite, 844-644-4645. While it is an 800 number, it's also a textable number. So feel free to text or, or call or, or leave messages on that one. Well, with nothing else then we will close the meeting and thank you each for attending it was wonderful to have an opportunity to get to know you better and to uh, share these things with you thank you well thank you guys, <laughs> thank you guys. That was great okay thank you we'll see, see you bye-bye well. yeah bye-bye